Good morning, it's Siona from Honouring ME. Um, sorry that you're not going to see my face today. We went out last night to celebrate our anniversary and I am not looking quite human yet, so you're only going to see my hands today, which is what we're here for anyway. So this morning I'm going to show how to do zigzag. Uh, there's many, many different variations, but the basic concept for them all is the same. Hi Jen, hi Jan, hi husband. <laughs> um, so I'll just teach the very simple one. This one here that I was making, or I've started making, has bobbles. Um, I won't show the bobbles for this one, but I will tell you where they would go if you want to put them in. Um, so, and I'll start from scratch for this. All right, so this, all zigzags will start with your base chain. So for this one in particular, I'm going to start with multiples of 16 and then I'm going to add two. So multiples of 16, I'm going to go up to, I'll see if I can count to 50 for this. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 30, getting there. Actually I might just do the 32. This looks bigger for this one. 30, 32 and then we'll add 2 to make it 34. And I'm going to trust that I counted properly. Okay so the basic rules on this one is the start and the end of every single row you're going to do two stitches. So for this one, I'm going to work in single crochet, um, which is double crochet if you're using UK terms. So using single crochet means I'm going to skip that first one and I'm going to work into the second one and I'm going to do two. I like to work into the bump, even though it's trickier. It gives you a neater edge. So that's one. And then two. Okay. So now, for the first part of the zigzag, I'm going to do seven single crochet. So we've got one. and then seven okay so we've done the first two then we've done seven so now we're going to skip that next one and we're going to do another seven so we've got one So by skipping one, we've started to create that dip. Can't see it too clearly here yet. So we've just done another seven. So this time, instead of skipping one, we're going to do three. Morning, Fiona. Thank you. <laughs> so we'll do three single crochet in this one. So we got one. hands are properly awake yet either. Three. 
Okay, so that will start the peak. So now I'll do another seven. Oops. So you just watch that because that stitch will hide away a little bit as well. Make sure you get that. Triangle. Okay, so this time we've just done a peak, we've got a valley, that looks like the way yet, so we're going to skip one, do another seven. So we're almost at the end. So as I said at the start, the start and every start and end of every row will have two stitches. So this one, I'm going to put two single crochet in that. Try to. One. Two. Okay. So you can sort of see we've got some dips and some valley or one peak there. So now we're going to chain one and turn. And we're going to go on the next row. So we start by doing two in that first stitch, so right there next to the chain one. So we're going to do two single crochet, double crochet if you're UK. Okay, so now we're just going to remember seven. So we're going to do seven. One, two, So this first one is going to be a dip. So instead of in the first round we skipped one, in every round now we or row I should say we're going to skip two. So we're going to skip that one and that one, and we're going to work into this third one, and we're going to do another seven. Okay, so this one's a peak, so in that next stitch we're going to work three stitches. So we're going to do three single crochet. One, two, three. So that's the next peak. So then we go down the other side, so we've got seven. Okay, so now we've got to skip two again, so that we're creating another dip, so we'll skip that sloppy one and that one. Okay. Do seven again. and then the last stitch which kind of gets hidden away will work too so by doing the two you're evening up what you've 
essentially lost in your decreases and you're giving it a straight edge as well. So that little hidden stitch there. chain one and ten so now you can see it's a lot more obvious and it'll just become more obvious as you do more rows there well you can see that zigzag okay so now chain one I did the chain one so we do two again now this in the pattern I was making the blue one this is the bobble row so if you wanted to do bobbles you would do three and then the fourth one work a bobble then do three and do skip them so it'd be the middle stitch so the fourth stitch on the third row becomes the bobble but I'm not going to do that so I've done two Let's see if I can make this quicker now so you could do this if you wanted it to be biggest you could work with double crochet or trebles if you're UK may like my first ripple blanket I wasn't very good at counting because counting is not my strong suit um, so I do recommend that maybe you put in some stitch markers if you don't want to count um, I don't usually like to count above five but I'm counting to seven you will start to see them and do it but if you do miss them then you'll end up with um, less obvious zigzags Okay, so that's getting more obvious now as we get into more rows. So can I do okay, so then we do three in this one. It's been a while since I've done a zigzag, but there's all sorts of different patterns you could do. I've got a retro cow um, where there's less counting because the dips and the peaks were created differently so it was more obvious where they were um, you could add other stitches in there so, okay so I've done seven skip those two I think I did seven <laughs> promise if it was a real piece I would count properly two in the last one. I do like a zigzag. Okay, so you can see it's becoming even more obvious now that we've got the more rows in. We'll just keep getting more and more obvious. It ends up with a nice straight edge as well, which is good. So if you're doing the bobble piece as well, then I'd have, so that row would have been a bobble row and then I do two rows before repeating row two to the five but yeah that's it so if there are any questions it's pretty easy so you can like I said make this double crochet instead of single crochet you could change you could add in popcorns or something else if you wanted some texture all different things you could be doing to make it pretty. I'm actually thinking now with the bobble one, I got some molars yesterday that are plainer so I might make a zigzag molar scarf as well with the bobbles. Um, yeah, that's essentially it. So before I sign off, for those of you that didn't get to watch this live if you're not in my Facebook group for help and ideas then I would love for you to join me so that you can tell me what it is you'd like to see on my lives um, because this is about what you want not necessarily what I want um, 
I do have my workshop next weekend as well so if you're in Perth we're making a corner to corner crochet coaster I should say um, and I will be turning those into online workshops membership at some stage in the very near future so for those of you that aren't in Perth you won't miss out and if you haven't joined my email list and I would also love for you to join that I'm at uh, www.honoring spelt the Aussie way with the U dash me dot com um, and you can sign up there and that's where one of the sites I sell all my patterns on but it has been lovely to show you all zigzag and I will go now and Maybe have another coffee and make myself a little bit more human for the weekend. So, thank you everyone. And I'll see you somewhere around Facebook. Alright, bye bye.